What's up guys? In today's video, I'm going to teach you and I'm going to show you how to create a trading bot. But this one is actually very special. Why? Because it was proposed by some, by some of you. So I will leave somewhere here the comment so you can see that. But yeah, what this guy was asking is that if we can create a bot that closes every operation opened when we reach a certain profit. So let's say that we have, I don't know, 100 operations open and we want that once the sum of all the profits are, uh, I don't know, like 10 euros, we want to close all the operations. How do we actually do that? So first of all, let me show you that you have here the code in my community. This community is the one in which the people learn how to do MQL, how to do bots with MQL5. You can join and you can come here and check the exercise. This is the exercise and this is the solution. But yeah, how do you join this community? I have to show you here my page. Here in this page, you can get my course and you can see my course. You can actually get the course for free if someone registers with your friend code. So yeah, enough said, let's start with the bot. So what we have to actually do is that we are going to come here to the MT5. Let me open the MT5. And here we are going to click the IDE. That's it. Okay. So let's create a new expert advisor. Let's remove all this. Click on new. Next. Let's give it a name. Profit bot. Something like that. Next. Finish. And now we make this big. And we remove everything. That's it. So how do we start? First of all, we are going to make a base bot, which is actually going to be very simple. We are going to use the RSI, but we are going to make that base bot so later we can close all the operations. So what we can actually do is that we are going to first create this handler, well, this handle, and then we are going to declare the variable in which we are going to store the data of the RSI. Perfect. So now that we have this, we can initialize these variables. So where do we initialize all this? In the event on init. Remember that this event is only executed once when we uh, put to work our bot. So in this code, we are, well, in this event, we are going to put the RSI to be initialized. So we call IRSI. We put the current market, the current period. Now, the period, well, the, time, the current time frame, and now we are going to put the period, and we apply apply this to the close. That's it. Now we need to check if this call was wrong, and we are going to check that like this. If the handle returned by this function is invalid, then this is not cool. So let's put here that okay that we have an error. Print error loading the RSI. Perfect. And now here we are going to return init failed so that the bot doesn't work. Okay, but any in any other case, we are going to return init succeeded. That's right. So what else do we have to do? Okay, now let's continue with the logic of the bot. Here we are now going to use the on tick event so on every tick we are going to do something but before before i forget we have to deinitialize this handle we have to close the handle how we are going to use another event which is on the init this event is the opposite of this one when the bot gets closed it is going to execute whatever is inside here so what do we have to put here here we are going to put okay if this handle that we have here is not invalid, then I want you to close this indicator release. We are going to release the indicator. That's right. That's everything we need. So here in the on tick event, we need to be loading all the time the data so that we know if we have to open a position or not. How do we do this? Copy buffer. Here we are going to put RSIH and here now it is asking us for the for the buffer number. What is this? Remember that there are a lot of type of uh, indicators. So for example, let me open the MACD yeah, insert indicators and here there should be, uh, I don't know, like 
just the moving average, for example. So you can see that the moving average is just one line. So when an indicator only has one thing, in this case, one line, with putting here a zero, it is okay because it is going to take that line. If I was showing the RSI, the RSI also has one line and you will see that. But when you have an indicator that has several things, such as, for example, the MACD, you will see that you have two things, one line and another or something else. So you have to decide what do you want and you decide that by putting here one number or another. Okay, so now from which candle do I want to start taking values? Remember that by putting here a zero, I am referring to the last candle. So if I put here a zero, now I would take this. If I put here a one, I would take this. If I put a here a two, I would take this. So from the very last one, I think, let me check because I don't want to make this wrong. Okay, so I'm wrong. This is, we are not going to take this from the last candle. We are going to take it from the previous of the last one. So this one. And now here we just want one value. So here we just have to put one. That's it. Where are we going to store all this? In the RSI array. That's right. So what else do we have to do? Now what we have to do is that we have to check the buy condition because we are only going to open buys. So we are going to put here by condition. If the condition is fulfilled and also we are in a new candle, then we are going to open an operation and we are going to put that logic inside here. But how do we know when do we have the by condition or how do we know when we have the a new candle? We have to create these new two functions. So for example, we have to create the by condition we take this, boom, and now we are going to put here bull because this returns a boolean variable, value, sorry, true or false. So the by condition, it is going to say, okay, if the current value of the RSI is below 30, open a buy position. I know the strategy is very simple, but yeah, it is enough for us to show how to close all the operations when we have a certain profit. Okay, so now we have to do this function, the new candle function, and this is quite simple. So what we have to do is that, okay, this also returns bull, new candle. And yeah, we need to declare one variable, which is going to be bars, which is going to store the number of bars that we have. Now we are going to load the current number of bars by calling bars. We say, okay, the current symbol, the current period. And now we say, okay, if the current bars is different than the bars that we have saved, this means that we have a new bar. So we have to update that number that we have saved. And also we have to return true. That's right. Okay, so now we also, if this is not the case, if we have the same number of bars saved and the current ones, so we are going to return false. Perfect. Okay, we don't have yet. Yeah. Let's check here. This I forgot to put const reason, okay. And okay, we have to do the last step, which is opening positions. How do we do this? We just have to first declare some libraries, trade, trade.mqh. And here in this file, we have the ctrade class, which is going to be actually very useful to create trades, to open positions. So what we have to do here, since we are going to open a buy, we are going to need the ask. So how do we get the ask? Double ask is going to be equal to symbol info double symbol. And then we say that we want the ask. Okay. The problem is that this function can return a lot of decimals and a lot of decimals are a lot of problems. So to solve those problems, we can call the function normalize double. And then we put here the number of digits. That's right. Okay, so now that we have the ask, we can call trade by, we send the volume, for example, 0 0.1, the current symbol, the current price, and we are not going to set any stop loss or any take profit. That's it, that's right. Only this. Indeed, we could actually just put this. If you put this, then you are opening a position in the current market at the current price 
with just 0.1 lottage or one as you want so okay now we have the base of our bot what do we have to do now what we have to do is to close all the operations whenever we have a certain amount of profit so how do we do this it is actually very simple let's create here well let's call here a function called close operations okay so this function is going to be called what this function has to do is that it has to sum all the all the profits of the different positions and if that profit is above a threshold we have to close all the positions so let's declare this function okay let's put it here that's right and okay first of all we have to take the current profit so we are going to put here profit and okay let's call here another function which is get profit well total profit let's put get well total profit that's it total profit okay and now we have to do the following if the profit is above the threshold that we are going to define now threshold then here we have to close all the operations close all the operations that's right but first of all let's define this variable the threshold this is going to be an input parameter that will allow the user to set the threshold so for example threshold is going to be at the beginning just let's say i don't know uh, 10 but the user can set this threshold threshold I'm not wrong. Uh, yeah, I think I'm not wrong. That's it. Perfect. So now we have to define this other function. And this is the last function. We have to define the total profit. And for this, what we are going to do is that, okay, this has to return a double because it is a number. And here we are going to put the following. Okay. So first of all, we declare a variable called profit that has the value zero. Perfect. And now what we are going to do is that, okay, we are going to go through all the positions opened, okay? We are going to make a loop here, and we put positions total, I plus plus, and remember that this function returns all the positions opened. So now we are going to take the ticket of each of those positions, you long ticket position get ticket okay so it is asking us for the position for the index and we have to send this so okay let's send this index that's right and now we are going to load that position into memory so we can take some values from it so for example to load that we just have to call position select by ticket and here we have the ticket so we put here ticket that's right. So now we can take the profit and what we are actually going to do is that we are going to increment this value by the position profit. So how do we get the position profit? Position get double and look, we have to put just position profit. That's right. So how, that's how we get the profit. That's perfect. Okay, and we are ready. We have this function. We just have to return at the end the profit, return profit. And here we are going to do the following. So, we have to close all the operations if the profit is above the threshold. So, what we have to do is that we have to do actually the exact same thing that we did here. So, we take this for loop and we say, okay, we have the ticket, we have the profit. Well, yeah, we have the ticket, which is the thing that we want, but we don't want the profit. What we have to do is that we are going to call trade position close to close all of them that's right okay so with this we have finished because now check this out if the profit is above the threshold we are going to go through all the positions and we are going to close them okay so let's try this out let's compile we don't have any mistake that's cool and now we are going to open mt5 we are going to go to the configuration we are going to check for our bot which was profit bot or something like this i don't remember yeah profit bot here it is and check this out remember that we set a parameter so we can do this we can come here and change this value if we want but we don't want to change that 
So, what we are actually going to do is that we are in the boom index, one minute, last month, yeah. Let's click on start and let's see what happens. So this has been opened in my other screen. And let's check this out. Remember that the logic of the bot is actually very simple. Whenever we are under the 30, it is going to start opening positions. As you can see here, it is opening by positions. And you can check that most of them were closed, excepting this one. So yeah, no, all well close. <laughs> Every position was closed. So you can check that every position here was closed once we had a certain amount of, of, yeah, of profit. So you can check that here, something similar is going to happen. But yeah, now there are going to be problems because we have to go very up. But yeah, that was the great example. That was the good example. So yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you understood how to do this. It's actually something very simple. So yeah, I truly recommend you that if you want to learn MQL5, you can join my course. You can see that now here, this yeah operation was all, well, all the operations were closed here. I guess that we reached that profit. So we can check this here. Well, we cannot check that, but yeah. So yeah, guys, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like, share, subscribe, and see you in the next one.